There are over a thousand players in the transfer portal. It can be overwhelming trying to keep up with who's who. What are who are some of the players that TCU is reportedly targeting in the portal to bring in and try to you know replace some talent, fill some gaps in the roster? We'll talk about that next during Locked On Horn Frogs. You are Locked On Horn Frogs, your daily podcast on the TCU Horn Frogs, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. That's right, Locked On Horn Frogs, your team every day. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. You can also find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Subscribe to those platforms as well. Rate me, review me, whatever you would like to do. Uh, but thanks for listening or watching to Locked On Horn Frogs. Portal is open. As of yesterday, um, nod, grad, nod grad transfers can officially enter the portal. So grad transfers can enter a little bit earlier, but the wave of everyone else can enter starting on December 4th. And so now we'll get some official visits set up. We'll get people communicating communicating. Uh, there might have been some communicating going on before this, but officially communication can start with players that are looking for a new home. And as I said in the open, there are over a thousand players that have entered the portal. There are all sorts of opportunities. And so one of the really fun things about college football now is sort of like free agency in the NFL. Um, you just kind of throw a bunch of names out, right? Like, hey, this player would be fun. Maybe there's a loose connection because TCU recruited this player in high school. Uh, maybe there's a teammate on the team, whatever the case may be. Uh, so I, I compiled some notes, and this is this is not everybody that they're targeting. I know there's been a lot of offers sent out, right? I understand all that. These are just looking around and, and seeing what's going on. Uh, these are some of the players that I'm seeing, like, real smoke to the idea of TCU is interested. Maybe there's some mutual interest. Potentially visits are being set up, all of those things. And so we'll start at the receiver position uh, with a guy that I've been talking about now for a few weeks, Eric McAllister. And as soon as Eric McAllister – entered the portal, which he entered a few weeks uh, before the season ended. Well, he announced his intention to enter the portal a few weeks before the season ended because at Boise State, their coach got fired. He decided he was going to move on. And so he just let people know, hey, just everybody knows I'm going to kind of shut things down this year and I'll be entering the portal at the end of the season. And there are Boise State reporters at that time that were like, hey, the team to watch here is TCU because Eric went to Azel and had a fantastic career there. He had a really good season at Boise State. Uh, Found the end zone five times, 47 catches for 873 yards, almost 19 yards per catch. Um, Showed an ability to go down the field and catch the ball vertically, which that vertical passing game is something that TC really missed this season. And part of that was, you know, O-line struggling to block. Part of that was just not great timing between QB and wide receiver. You had an injury at quarterback with Chandler Morris being replaced by Josh Hoover. You also had receivers that were sort of in and out of practice throughout the season. Sonny Dykes expressed his frustration about just the lack of availability of some of those guys and how that affects your timing and just your chemistry and all those different variables when we're talking about routes and uh, making the right decisions, making the right reads, getting the ball to your targets. And so McAllister could help with that. Um, I like that he was super productive at the group of five level. He's got a lot of experience. As I said, he's a local kid. And Jeremy Clark from 247 Sports, um, he had a lot of information. I won't share all of it because it's behind a paywall. I encourage you to go check that site out. But he did say that there is a visit that's going to be scheduled soon between Eric McAllister and TCU. So this is a guy that they've had as a priority from the beginning. It sounds like, you know, he's really interested as well. Um, he's got family ties there. He's he's a local kid, and so maybe they can get him, you know, in the fold early. Eric McAllister, um, the Boise State wide receiver, showing interest in TCU, and TCU interested in him as well. There will be a visit scheduled soon. We'll see if he ends up as a frog in the coming weeks. Another name to know, um, and somebody mentioned this name recently, Braylon James. So Braylon James, uh, his teammate in high school, or one of his teammates in high school at Round Rock Stony Point, was – um, Cam Cook, who is now here at TCU. And Braylon was an All-American um, in high school. At Stony Point had a fantastic season. He signs with Notre Dame, ends up you know, spending his true freshman season there, and then after this year decides he's going to move on. Only hit the field one time, had one catch, or in one game had one catch for 12 yards. So, I mean, it was pretty much on the sidelines all season long. But great size, great frame. Um, 6'2", physical wide receiver, 
Uh, and Mike Roach uh, did some reporting on 247 Sports and said that James, you know, is in contact with TCU or TCU shown interest. And the schools that were listed here, TCU, Texas Tech, UTSA, Iowa State, Rutgers, Stanford, and Florida State have all indicated interest. So a long list here. Um, now, it's interesting because James is, like I said, has a lot of physical gifts, um, tested really well, was a four-star player coming out of high school, didn't see the field, and so he's looking for greener pastures. Um, and you might you might say, well, that sounds a lot like a guy that uh, just left or is planning on leaving TCU as well And Cordell Russell, who hit the portal on Monday. Um, now, I don't know all the reasons as to why Braylon didn't play at Notre Dame. Uh, I will say, like, it's – it's not uncommon. Like we, I think now because there's so much coverage of recruiting, and we have um, just a much better understanding of who these guys are when they're coming on campus and they enroll early, and you know what their stats were in high school and what kind of players they are, and there's all these evaluations that we just expect them to immediately come in and contribute. That's not always necessarily the case, and so Braylon was a guy that um, didn't see the field in Notre Dame. Uh, in his freshman year, but that's okay. He, this is the type of player that you want to take a flyer on because he's got a high ceiling. He maintained his red shirt, so he still has four years of eligibility. So he can come in and learn the offense here. Um, and, I mean, this might not be someone who's going to contribute in 2024, and that's fine. Now, I don't know what his aspirations are. I imagine if he's um, – he, he would get closer to home by coming to TCU, obviously being closer to, to Round Rock and uh, where he went to high school at Stony Point. I'm not sure if he's – trying to play immediately. I know that's the goal for everybody. So I don't know the conversations that are going to be had. Um, maybe, you know, a school like Texas Tech or Rutgers, they can get on the field faster. Maybe that's the difference. Uh, but TCU is interested in Braylon James and Notre Dame transfer. And I know some some of you have been asking me, like, why are they so focused on wide receivers? They brought in a lot of wide receivers last year. Uh, well, I mean, some of those guys are moving on. Like Warren Thompson will be moving on. Um, we don't really know, like – uh, of course, Cordell Russell at the portal. I'm not sure what the status of, of uh, Dalen Wright's going to be. Like, I know, I imagine he's going to be on the field for TCU, but he had injury concerns this offseason. And so I think they're looking for big physical players on the outside um, that can come in and play and play opposite Savion Williams because Savion really closed the season strong uh, and did a nice job um, as the year went on improving and getting better. And so – if you can find another big physical wide receiver to the other side of him that can take some pressure off and get some production, uh, then that could be a huge deal. So Braylon James and Eric McAllister are two names to know um, that they're going after. Another name in the portal that uh, entered yesterday, Chris Brazel, um, who played at Tulane last year. He's from uh, Midland. He's classified as freshman, be a sophomore next season. 44 catches, 711 yards, and five touchdowns. Again, a super productive year in the American Conference. And I'll talk a little bit later about Willie Fritz, who's a great coach. Willie Fritz is headed to Houston. Um, and so uh, you would think there would be some interest there, right? He could reunite with his old coach. Uh, but the main reason that, that – uh, Chris's name has come up with TCU is because his dad, Shannon Brazel, played middle linebacker for the Frogs um, and is a TCU Hall of Famer. And he tweeted this out yesterday. TCU family, just know I'm doing everything in my power to get him here with us. But at the end of the day, I support his decision. And he tagged his son, Chris. He tagged uh, the TCU radio uh, broadcast, um, Jeremiah Donati, and a TCU Insider account. So, Hey, Shannon, get after it, man. We appreciate that you were uh, obviously like number one, that you're a great father and you're looking out for your son's best interests. But that's really encouraging that, I mean, he wants him to be in Fort Worth. He wants him to be at TCU. Um, and so hopefully TCU can impress him and can, you know, get him on board. Now, I will say the early, like um, some of the articles I've read, and I don't know if this is actual like reporting about mutual interest or if this is just, hey, this really good wide receiver at Tulane hit the portal. Um, here's a couple schools that would make sense for him just based on, you know, kind of what we think. But Houston um, was mentioned because of that Willie Fritz connection. He's going to head over 
to U of H. Uh, another school that was mentioned was Baylor with Jake Spavital as their new offense coordinator because um, they're going to spread things out and, and supposedly throw the ball around the field. That's what Jake's done everywhere he's been. Mississippi State with Jeff Levy. Um, so kind of the usual suspects. Teams that are going to throw the ball around a lot and try to make plays. Uh, but, man, Brazel and McAllister and James, if you could land two of those three, I know receiver might not be the number one need on everybody's list, but uh, there's nothing wrong with stacking talent. And I'm, I'm all in on finding talented players and getting them in the building. And then you just kind of see what happens once they get here and you hope for the best. Um, but those are some names to know. And we're going to continue this conversation here in segment two. I got some more players that you should keep an eye on. Um, a tight end from Harvard, a offensive lineman from San Diego State. And then we'll uh, transition a little bit into some coaching changes in the Big 12. That's all coming up here on Lockdown Horn Frogs. If you need tickets, maybe you do a sporting event, maybe you need tickets to a concert, a comedy show, uh, whatever the case may be, download the GameTime app. GameTime app's great. It's it's tough now to know, okay, where I'm, I'm thinking about this today because um, I'm considering like going to a couple TCU basketball games soon. And you're always like, okay, do I go through the web, the school website and try to get single game tickets, uh, StubHub Ticketmaster? No, you need to go to the GameTime app. And one thing I love about the GameTime app, it's simple and easy to use. You just download that app, a couple clicks of a button, and you can have tickets, and they're sent straight to your phone. And so you don't have to wonder, okay, do I have to check my email? It's just sent straight to your phone. They have a, a, a feature that everyone loves where it shows you exactly where your seat is. Like there's a picture of the view of the court or the stage where the event is. There's a, a clear picture that shows you, okay, this is this is what I'm looking at. When I sit down, this is going to be my view. This is going to be the setup. And so it allows you to make that decision. Um, they you got a promo code going on right now, Locked On College, $20 off on the Game Time app um, on your first purchase if you use that promo code, Locked On College. They have uh, last-minute ticket deals, flash deals, easy to find and buy tickets for every kind of event in your area. Views from every seat in the venue, um, event cancellation protection, and, and all the different you know insurance that you would want when you're purchasing tickets. And it's super easy to use. The Game Time app. Download it today. That promo code is Locked On College. Get twenty dollars off your first purchase. Sports, music, movies, comedy shows, theater, whatever it is. Download the Game Time app. Do it today. Continue our conversation about uh, TCU players or players that TCU is going to target in the transfer portal, players that they're going to go after. So we talked about three wide receivers there in segment one. Um, Chris Brazel, the uh, young wide receiver from Tulane, who had over 700 yards receiving for the Green Wave um, this past year. Eric McAllister, who had a super productive year for Boise State. And then Braylon James, young Notre Dame wide receiver who didn't really play in his freshman season, but has a ton of potential. Great physical ability, great size. Um, all those guys could come in and play, you know, on the outside, you would think hopefully really soon and make an impact for TCU. James might be more of a future prospect, uh, but some some good names to, to know and hopefully players that will be on visit soon and will try uh, to get connected with the coaching staff. A tight end that TCU offered early in the process, uh, Tyler Neville from Harvard. Um, so at that tight end position, you're losing Jared Wiley. You're losing Chase Curtis. You do have DeAndre Rodgers coming back, um, who played some last year, had a touchdown reception against uh, Texas Tech, uh, and he's the guy I think they're excited about. Also Lafayette Caraway, um, the young tight end who was dealing with an injury this past season, but was a, is, you know, was a true freshman, got a taste of the program. Hopefully he'll be healthy and will be ready to go. But Neville is kind of an immediate plug-and-play player. Um, he had a lot of snaps over the last three seasons in the Ivy League, 698 yards on 62 receptions through his career in 2023, 283 yards receiving on 24 catches and four touchdowns, uh, four touchdowns in 2022 as well, and 302 yards receiving on 26 receptions. So somebody they've used in the red zone. A red zone threat, somebody knows how to find the end zone, uh, was also used a lot as an inline blocker, uh, so can help you in the run game, and kind of continues the theme of guys that have played a lot of ball, you know, regardless of the level, have just played a lot of college football, um, and can come in and hopefully get acquainted with an offense and, and the team and the culture quickly um, and, and contribute in a, in a big way. I, I feel like last year they went after a lot of players – uh, TCU is who I'm talking about, obviously, um, that did nice things at the P 
power five level, but weren't super consistent. Uh, didn't play a ton of snaps either because of injury or just lack of production. And they were hoping that those guys could be immediate impact players. And it just didn't really work out. And some of that was um, injury issues as well. Uh, but Neville's a guy that's played a lot of the Ivy League level. And so he's been offered and he's someone that, uh, you know, has consistently been brought up through this process. Um, another name on the offensive line, Cade Bennett from San Diego State. And according to 247 Sports, um, he'll be visiting TCU. He's also got interest uh, from Mississippi State, Oregon State, Virginia Tech, and Houston. Um, and he's 6'5", 305 pounds, interior offensive lineman, played guard last year uh, for the Aztecs, graded really well on pro football focus, uh, has two years of eligibility left. He's a grad transfer, so he can play immediately. You need help on this offensive line. You have to get better. If you can't block better up front, uh, then it's going to be a long year regardless of what kind of weapons you have on the outside. Now, I think – uh, they did get better in pass protection as the season went on last year. That was an area where they improved, um, and, and you saw the development through the year. The run game was bad, and particularly on the inside, on the interior, they just could not get push. Um, that's why, in, in a lot of ways, you saw uh, Kendall Bryles being super creative in the red zone, trying to do a lot of different things in short yard situations that made you scratch your head. Uh, I feel like most of that was predicated because he, on the fact that he didn't trust his offensive line to just get downhill and go straight ahead at the point of attack and, you know, get fourth and one or third and one, whatever the case may be. So you need to get better there. Now, Colton Deary played some last season. Um, and he played a lot of the guard position. He was a center at Maryland. And so with John Lands moving on, I wonder if they move him over to the center spot. And you would think they would have that luxury uh, it would be more likely they would have that luxury if they bring in a guy like Cade Bennett, who has started at that guard spot for a long time. But to me, this is the biggest priority in the portal. You know, I, I love the idea of bringing in receivers who have been productive, bringing in explosive playmakers, uh, but you have to replace what you're losing on the O-line. Um, Willis Patrick's going to be moving on. John Lanz will be moving on. Uh, I mean, I'm assuming Willis Patrick, and, or excuse me, Andrew Coleman, and Andrew Coker, and Brandon Coleman will also – be leaving. So that's four of your five offensive linemen that played significant snaps last year that will be uh, hitting the, or, you know, trying to hit the NFL, trying to move on to the next phase of life. And that's a lot of snaps that you have to um, replace, even for an O-line that struggled, you know, this past season and wasn't at their best. Um, that's just a lot of players that you're going to have to uh, replace at, at one position group and, and offensive line play. So predicated on chemistry and understanding your assignments and working together. Um, so getting players with experience is going to be a huge priority. So we'll see if they can land. Cade been at the San Diego state transfer. Cade was actually originally at Oklahoma state and he transferred to San Diego state. And now he's in the portal again as a grad transfer. Somebody uh, reached out to me last night. Let me see if I can find this message. Um, Alex Coleman. He said, TCU needs to get Aiden Childs in the portal. Trust me. Um, I, I do trust you. I mean, Aiden's a talented kid. He was at Oregon State. I believe he's a four-star talent coming out of high school. Um, and so I haven't heard about any reported interest there, uh, Alex. But, I mean, that's a that's a good name to know. I think, you know, when I was looking around this morning after I, I saw your message, it seems like all the smoke is with him going with Jonathan Smith to Michigan State. But maybe that's a guy that TCU could get involved with. I just have the my uh, my thought about what the type of player that TCU is going to go after at the quarterback position this offseason is it's going to be more of a bridge guy, like somebody with experience um, that could either back up Josh Hoover or maybe challenge him. But I don't think it's going to be a young player um, with multiple years of eligibility. Maybe it, maybe that'll end up being the case. But just with Haas coming in. Um, and then Josh still having multiple years left, uh, I would be surprised if, if someone ended up here. But if someone like that ended up here. But um, I think that's a good evaluation. I mean, Aiden's talented, and it would be great if he, you know, could end up in purple. I just don't see that happening. It sounds like Michigan State's the front runner. We'll see if, uh, if that changes here in the next few days. Um, one thing I want to note as well in the Big 12, um, so Houston made a really good hire yesterday. Willie Fritz is their new head coach. Willie Fritz has been at Tulane um, for, I think, the past seven seasons. Uh, they just lost, actually, the American Conference Championship to SMU. Um, and you wonder if 
his departure, his impending departure at Houston had a lot to do with, you know, how that game played out. Um, but Willie Fritz has been successful everywhere he's been. He's won, he won a couple of Juco national championships at Blinn in 95 and 96, went 24 and 0 over two seasons there. Uh, then he went to central Michigan or central Missouri, excuse me. Um, and did a nice job, got them to the D2 playoffs a few times, uh, consistently churned out, you know, nine, 10, seven win seasons, uh, was successful at Sam Houston State, um, got them to the SCS playoffs in 2011 and 2012, then went to Georgia Southern, helped them make the transition to FBS football. Um, and in 2006, showed up at Tulane and had kind of an up and down tenure with the Green Wave, uh, but had three straight seasons where they made a bowl game in 2018, 2019, and 2020, then had a really down year in 2021. But then in 2022 and 2023, 12 and two in 2022, including a, a cotton bowl win over Caleb Williams and USC. Um, and in this past season, uh, they went 11 and two um, and went eight and no in conference play before losing to SMU. And they're going to play in the military bowl, even though I, I doubt he'll be at that bowl game. I think he'll be, um, getting ready there at Houston. But I was kind of surprised. I mean, just to be frank, like uh, I know Park Rainsworth, the Locked On Cougs host, is excited. That Houston job, like it, it's kind of fascinating. It's one of those pretty much every, you know, college football job in Texas, there's this idea of like, oh, that's a sleeping giant just because of the uh, ability to recruit locally. Um, but, I mean, Houston being the Big 12, uh and the resources they'll have there, that's obviously attractive, but it still feels like an uphill battle where at Tulane, I mean, he had a built-in system where it felt like they were going to be at the top of the American Conference year in and year out. But, um, all, you know, coaches are always looking for new opportunities, maybe the, just the chance to um, play and uh, potentially get an opportunity to play in the playoff, all those different things was the reason why he's going to move on. But that's a really good hire by Houston. The other reason I mentioned this is because Gary Patterson, um, his name came up when this uh, job came open, and people thought, well, this would make sense if he ended up back in the Big 12. Um, and apparently he had some conversations with the Cougs, but no formal interview. Uh, and I don't know where Gary's going to end up. I know that New Mexico job was open, um, and that would make sense to me. He would be close to his friend Jerry Keeler's at New Mexico State. We'll see uh, where, you know, Gary ends up. He told Matt Mosley on the radio a few weeks ago he intends to get back into coaching. And so he he wants to get back after it and coach football team. Um, when we come back, TCU women's basketball, they take on uh, Abilene Christian tonight. And I'll tell you about why you should watch them if you haven't yet because they're a fun team. That's coming up here on Lockdown Horn Frogs. LinkedIn is the place to go if you need to find work. It's also the place to post your job if you are a small business um, trying to hire folks. LinkedIn jobs, when you're hiring for a small business, you want to have as many top tier candidates as possible to interview. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn jobs. They have the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team. They do it faster. Most importantly, they'll do it for free. LinkedIn is not just another job board. They have a vast network of over a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. Hiring is easy when you have so many quality candidates. So is the fact that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats and might not have the time and resources to hire. Thankfully, with LinkedIn, the process is intuitive. It's quick. It's easy. They've even launched a feature that helps you write job descriptions, making the process even easier and quicker. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash college. That's LinkedIn.com slash Locked On College. Post your job for free. Terms and conditions, as always, apply. LinkedIn, it's a place to find work. It's a place to post your job uh, listings to get the best candidates, narrow down your search, do it quickly, do it easily at LinkedIn.com slash Locked On College. TC Women's Basketball is undefeated. They're 8-0. They play Abilene Christian tonight. Um, and in their last game against to Tulsa. They won 82 to 50. And Madison Connor, the transfer from Arizona, who's had a great season so far, so far, she had 41 points. She was 10 of 15 from three, seven of seven from the free throw line, 12 of 23 overall from the field. Madison Connor is an outstanding shooter. She's been lighting it up from three so far this year. Uh, 41 points is insane. Sedona Prince added 15. Uh, and then everybody else was in the single digits. It was really the Madison Connor show um, that night against uh, Tulsa. But this seems fun to watch. So they run a spread pick and roll system. Uh, Mark Campbell, their new coach, 
you know, they're kind of a non-traditional team. They're playing sort of positionless ball. Jaden Owens, their point guard, she orchestrates things. She does a great job getting inside, uh, finding the lane, finding open shooters. And so I just encourage you. They play Abilene Christian at 630 tonight. If you haven't watched this team, um, now's a good time to, to jump on the bandwagon. They got seven votes in the latest AP Top 25 poll. Um, they're, the rest of their non-conference schedule are against teams that it looks like they should beat. And then they'll hit the teeth of the Big 12 uh, conference, and that's going to be tough. You know, this the league that's really good. Um, they're, they come right out the gates and they play BYU, then they play Baylor on the road, Oklahoma State, and Texas. So we'll find out really quickly with all these transfers they have just how good they are. But if they win tonight, they would have um, – already beat the win total from last year and the last year under Reagan Peebley. The talent's a lot better. Uh, they're a fun team to watch. So TCU women, they're taking on Abilene Christian tonight. If you haven't seen them play, I would just encourage you to go watch it uh, because they're a fun group. They're playing great basketball. They're undefeated. They're looking to remain undefeated. Um, and the men are undefeated as well. I saw somebody tweet yesterday uh, that we're getting, we're getting closer to something that really hasn't happened maybe ever where TCU men's and women's basketball are relevant at the same time. Um, both teams are going to have trouble in conference play, but or trouble. Both teams are going to be challenged significantly in conference play because the Big 12 is so good, uh, but both teams are off to great starts. Uh, some audience reaction. Uh, I did an episode yesterday about Stephen A. Smith saying that it was TCU's fault Florida State got left out of the college football playoff because they got embarrassed in the national championship game last year and the committee didn't want that to happen again, which is a stupid take because TCU won their playoff game, uh, their semifinal game. Uh, Matthew Welker said, I was hoping you or someone would cover this. Funny how TCU beat the chosen one Michigan last year and still gets no respect. Yeah, I mean, I think so much of this is at this time of year, just to be frank, a lot of people who don't follow college football suddenly chime in and try to get involved. And people who haven't watched games all year or maybe have watched, you know, just some of the big games all year are like, oh, I need to care about college football. Who are the four or five blue blood names I need to know? Um, and, yeah, and so they don't have great opinions. Uh, KTM Idaho said the TC Mission game was and will go down as the top five game in all of NCAA history. Texas USC is up there too. And that Texas USC Rose Bowl was a, was a classic. I mean, we can make fun of Longhorn Network for playing that game all the time, but it was a really great football game. Um, and, I mean, it's obviously one of my favorites. Like, it was back and forth. That second half was insane. So many huge plays, so many emotional swings. Um, just a, a great game all around. Jonathan said, "What what's a crazy stat in Michigan the past two years? Most points they've given was 24. TCU hung 51 on them. They sure did. I mean, they played well all year long, um, and they came out in that Michigan game against the defense that had done a great job, as you said, and I don't think Michigan had seen speed like that and playmakers like that outside of Ohio State. Uh, and they had trouble keeping up with a TCU team that was moving around and firing around and getting it done. Thank you, as always, for chiming in on YouTube um, or Twitter. I'm at Locked On uh, TCU or at Simcox Steven. We'll be back tomorrow. Uh, we do this five days a week. It's Locked On Horn Frogs, your team every day.